Well, it had to happen at some point, didn't it? I've crashed it. I was out at my local lake, nice sunny day, and then disaster struck. I backed this drone into a tree, then into the f lake. Here we go, and this give you all a good laugh. So I was cruising along, really enjoying myself. I'm over on the right hand side, clear line of sight of the drone, and I thought to myself, I'm gonna change direction and go back a little bit. Bear in mind, the sun is coming from the back of the drone. And before I know it, bosh, down it went. Right, let's watch this in slow motion. So as you can see, I'm going back here, and I'm expecting the obstacle avoidance sensor to do its stuff, and you see it shift there, but no, no luck, it failed. I think I'm going to have to admit here, it's my fault. I've misjudged it. So there you have it. The drone ended up in the water, still recording, and this is what it looked like when I found it. I'm not sure whether it went completely under or not, whether it flipped around, but it is definitely wet, looking sorry for itself, screaming for help. Just after I crashed, this is what it showed on the screen. It said there's a battery error, and the aircraft returned to home. Well, it won't go in nowhere. It's just laying there, belly up, waiting to be rescued. Let's take a look at the damage I've done. Here we go. The front avoidance sensor's got water in it, clearly. But you know what? After I drive this off, it works. It ain't a problem. It's still really, really functional. Doesn't actually show any signs of error. However, I will replace that in the future. Gimbal's taken quite a knock, as you can see here. The actual camera had rotated all the way back on itself, 180 degrees, and it was stuck fast, just like this. No matter what I'd done, I couldn't wiggle it out. What I had to do with it in the end was give it a really good firm push and hope it didn't snap. After about five minutes of pushing and tugging, it did actually come back round and free itself. So I had a lucky escape. One of the LEDs must have hit the rock and got a good bashing, but it still functions, it's all right. It must have been quite an hard knock. Underneath that screw is this. As you can see there in the arrow, I've actually broke off the screw mount for the main body. The only real way of fixing that is to get a whole new chassis, but doing that would be a pain in the arse, so I'm leaving it. And there you go, you can see a few more dents. It's purely cosmetic. The footage you're seeing here is of the drone after I dried it out and put it all back together again. But it's sods bloody law that I've lost one of the nuts, so I'm gonna to have to go onto eBay and buy a whole new set. But at least that way I'll have some spares for the future. So there you go, just for 11 99 I got a whole new screw pack for the Maverick Air 2. Brilliant. And also a bottom plate to replace the one I've smashed up. So you've got this message over the air vent. As you can see, as water's gone through, all the crap's collected. But that's simple to get rid of with just a toothbrush. Here's the battery. It's been for a good swim and the rest of the drone. Well, as you'd expect, it is completely dead. If you hold in the button, nah, nothing, no green lights. But you know, I didn't expect it to survive. So here's a look inside if you've never seen inside a battery. As you can see, it's just a load of cells cased in with a couple of circuit boards. And that's it. But I'm afraid it's like a big sponge all the water's gone down the side. So, you know, I've ordered another one. And as I was recording this video, it's turned up from Amazon. So here it is. I'll bung this one in and chuck the other one out. If your battery gets wet, don't try to save it. It will fail in the future. Bung it in the bin. Which is really important. Once you find your drone in water, don't try to turn it on by the button. Just whip that battery out. Stop that circuit from running. These drones are full of sensors. There's free circuit boards. And I'll tell you what, once you get water in it, it's an absolute nightmare. But it's important that you strip it down as quick as you can and start drying it off. As you can see here, look, there's loads to do. I didn't get many pictures, but just give you a general idea of what's inside. Stripping a drone down like this ain't easy. You just got to be really, really careful. Remember what you're taking apart and how to put it back together again. If you're not sure, you've had it. Send it back to DJI and hope for the best. Once you've got that drone apart, the best thing you can do is get a hairdryer and start pushing all that water out. It's really important you get as much out as you can. The heat will evaporate a lot of the water, but you'll never get it all. you just got to hope you're lucky. If you've got any isopropylene, use that to clean all the contacts, but make sure you use 99%. I only had 70 here, but because everything was covered in water, that's all I had. I used this with some cotton buds and to wipe everything down with. Here's a quick demo of what I did to the drone after I thought I'd got most of the water off. 
I put it in this container here of all this rice. Put the lid on firm. The idea behind this is that the rice is so dry and the atmosphere is sealed, all the moisture within the drone will get sucked back into the rice. To accelerate the process further, I put it in the airing cover where it's nice and warm. I then waited 24 hours for the result. It's important to note that you should never ever put that battery back in your drone and turn it on before you're 100% confident that it's totally dry. Well, does the drone work? Yes, it does. There it is flying. I can't believe it. I didn't think this thing would ever go again. I thought once water was in it, that was it. It would be dead. But clearly, as you can see, it's flying along lovely and I'm so happy with it. However, something did go wrong. Earlier on in the video, I showed you the gimbal and I explained how it put itself all the way back when it crashed and I had to force it back the other way. However, I think it's actually damaged. Take a look at this footage. So I thought I'd do a little test flight to see how the gimbal's performing. Put it up in the air, and here we go. Let's see what happens. I go forward, ah, there you have it. Bring it back again, then go forward quickly again, and that's it. The gimbal jutters. It doesn't catch up with the movement of the drone. Now, if I put it into tripod mode, it's okay, you can keep up, but in sports or normal mode, it just doesn't have it. So, it would appear that the gimbal is probably knackered. And that's just my tough luck. It's gonna to need to be replaced or fixed. Well, I've learned my lesson there. Do not fly these things into trees, dunk them in lakes. The gimbal is clearly knackered, so I'll have to send it back to DJI to get it fixed. But, it's all my fault. I just have to remember in the future, don't trust these sensors. When the sunlight gets on them, they're not that reliable. From now on, I'm gonna to have to use my Mini 2 to do a few flights, but once this is fixed, I'll be back with more content. So if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. We've got loads of content coming up in the future. And by the way, that's not a bogey. It's just where I need a shave. See you later.